All right, hi guys. So let's start the next episode of Five MCQs in Five Minutes, where we are discussing five high yield topics through these MCQs. And currently, I am in June. Slowly and slowly, I'll be you know, uh, discussing January 2023 as well. Let's go and discuss the very first one. Uh, a tourist has visited an Indian village and developed mild diarrhea, which later was found to be caused by E. coli. Okay, mild diarrhea later on it was confirmed it is by E. coli. That means this is actually a case of traveler's diarrhea. And guys, all of you guys are already aware that for the traveler's diarrhea, the most preferred agent that we are having it is going to be your loperamide, one of the opioid. Loperamide it will decrease the secretion, it will decrease the motility. Decreasing the motility is the most important function of loperamide. Apart from that, it is also preferred agent. Loperamide that we have, it is also considered the drug of choice or preferred agent in chemo-induced diarrhea. See, so far we have already studied the drug of choice for nausea and vomiting. That is chemo-induced is going to be 5-HT3 antagonist on densetron. Now in the previous examination, they asked chemo-induced diarrhea. So that is another MCQ for all of you guys. The correct answer for this one is going to be your loperamide. Rifaximin is one of the rifamycin derivatives that is mainly utilized for a patient coming to you with irritable bowel syndrome. For secretory diarrhea, we can utilize octreotide that is having many other functions as well. Zinc again is a supplement that can be utilized in diarrhea, especially in pediatric population. This was our first question. Let's see the second one. Which of the following statement is incorrect? Now read the question very carefully. Examiner is asking which is incorrect about organophosphate carbamate. All time favorite question of the examiner. The very first question. Carbamates are uh, very first option. I mean, carbamate bind to acetylcholine esterase irreversibly. Does it bind to irreversible? Yes. All the irreversible inhibitor of acetylcholine esterase that we have, they can be organophosphate, they can be carbamate. They are the irreversible inhibitor, right? So definitely they inhibit. Now always remember that organophosphate and carbamate they both are irreversible they are going to bind which site at which site they bind they bind at the anionic and they bind at the esteric site anionic and esteric site they will be binding out of these two site if any one of the site is occupied this acetylcholine esterase will be uh, uh, will fail to do its action what is the action of acetylcholine esterase it is supposed to metabolize the uh, your neurotransmitter acetylcholine okay now do remember Option B that says atropine is an antidote. So, of course, it's the antidote. Antidote of choice for organophosphate carbamate. It is going to be atropine, which everyone is already aware. We have to find out incorrect. Remember, okay. Pralidoxy has its role in reversal of carbamate poisoning. I am not sure yet. Let's see the next one. Atropine is an antidote for carbamate. So, atropine is an antidote for organophosphate. And it is also the antidote for carbamate. So, definitely B and C to correct. Hai. Now, by rule of exclusion also, C is directly coming that it is looking that it's one of the options that can be correct. And uh, the solving MCQ, as I told you, is a skill and you have to develop over time. Pralidoxim has its role in reversal of carbamate. Do remember that oxymes, pralidoxime is coming from the oxyme group. Oxymes are only going to be effective for organophosphate poisoning. Organophosphate poisoning only they are not effective for they are not effective for carbamate poisoning cb means carbamate they are not effective for carbamate poisoning do you remember oxymes are a class of drug that is known as your acetylcholine esterase reactivator now why is that let's quickly understand in 30 seconds as i told you that this is acetylcholine esterase let's say that we are having two important uh, site here one side is known as anionic site and other one is esteric site. Both the sites should be vacant for the normal function of this enzyme, right? Now, out of these, if any of one of them will be occupied, then it will not be working. You see, in the organophosphate, OP is organophosphate. It is binding only esteric site, while carbamate, CB is carbamate. It is binding both the sites. Now, for oxyme to work, there is a rule. The rule is any of uh, the one site, like anionic site, should be vacant. Whenever you are going to give oxyme, what this oxyme will do, these oxymes, they are going to bind at the anionic site. They will bind where? At the anionic site. Now look at the description here that I'm going to give you very, very important. When they bind at the anionic site, after binding, they will be forming a complex with the organophosphate. Just come both there. Phosphooxyme complex, PO complex, phospho oxyme complex this complex once they form after forming this complex what they will do they will dissociate from here after forming this complex what they are going to do they are going to dissociate from here it will be excreted and this anionic and esteric side both of them are going to be vacant i hope it is making sense to all of you guys that why organophosphate poisoning may oxymes are effective and not in carbamate because in carbamate both the sites are occupied right so i hope it is making clear sure and i'm making clear to all of you guys 
let's see the next one a 70 year old parkinson disease patient suffer from constipation after taking anti parkinsonian drug now whenever you look at the parkinson disease guys parkinson disease may there is going to be degeneration of the dopaminergic neuron right now dopamine if the degeneration of dopaminergic neuron then there will be decrease in the dopamine this is leading to decrease in the dopamine and because of that multiple symptom will be coming in a normal person if you are going to compare the neurotransmitter level in a normal person then dopamine will be equally balanced with the acetylcholine there is a normal but because there is a degeneration of the dopaminergic neuron what is going to happen here look at this and compare this with the normal one here dopamine will be lesser there is decrease in the dopamine and because there is decrease in the dopamine acetylcholine will automatically be high now if you want to treat this one you are having to aim aim number one give dopaminergic drug that is why for the treatment of the parkinson disease the most preferred one is going to be the most preferred one it's going to be your levodopa Sorry, it was a description long ago, but quickly we are going to finish it. Levodopa is the most preferred one that we are having. Apart from that, remember, that is the dopaminergic drug. We can also bring the acetylcholine down. We can bring the acetylcholine down. And when you bring the acetylcholine down by giving centrally acting anticholinergic drug, then definitely it will be forming a, a balance, right? So levodopa is going to increase the dopamine. It will have many symptoms, many side effects, like a heart-related side effect. There will be tachycardia. It can even uh, lead to, you know, problem with the uh, cataract, you know? Benztropine is one of the centrally acting anticholinergic drug. Benztropine, benzhexol, they are anticholinergic one and they will have anticholinergic like side effect. Anticholinergic that is decreasing the motility and all. So which of the following, uh, you know, uh, he is developing constipation. Which of the following drug can cause? Again, benztropine is a centrally acting anticholinergic that can cause. Pramipexol, ropinrol, they are again a dopamine receptor agonist. All of you should know that they can also be utilized in the restless leg syndrome. They will be associated with many other side effects like hallucination. They will be having many other side effects but not constipation. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea could be a possibility. Constipation is because of central acting anticholinergic. Metoclopramide again, they will be associated with the abnormal posture. They are going to be associated with the abnormal posture. Take like extra pyramidal symptom. Abnormal posture like extra pyramidal symptom because they are the D2 blocker. They are the D2 blocker. Okay. Fourth one, a uh, drug combination preferred for MTP. N number of uh, repeated question. Uh, no? the, multiple times this has been asked. We are going to give anti-progestin like mifepristone. So 200 milligram of uh, RU486 or we also call it as a mifepristone. Uh, no? M for mifepristone. Apart from that, after 48 hours, you wait for 48 hours. After 48 hours, we are going to give 800 microgram of mesoprostol. And uh, mesoprostol. So this is one of them that has been already, you know, asked many number of times. Uh, no? And remember this one, this, there is a screenshot that has been taken from your Goodman Gilman, as I told you already, that you are going to give mifepristone. After that, you are going to use a progesterone like mesoprostol that will be 48 hours after. And a dose has also been men mentioned here, the, the one that I told you. Fifth one, in a patient with proliferative diabetic retinopathy. So in a patient with the age-related macular degeneration, proliferative diabetic retinopathy, we are going to use VEGF inhibitor. VEGF inhibitor. Which of the following monoclonal antibody that can be utilized? Belimumab, Bevacizumab, Infliximab, Rituximab. Among the given one, we are going to utilize Bevacizumab. That is one of the VEGF inhibitor. Right? So Bevacizumab agent that we are having is going to be, this is not the only one. We are having other agents like Bevacizumab. Other one that we know is a ranibizumab. Then for our neat PJ aspirant, you can remember also there are two more drugs that you should know. Brulosizumab. These are just the important ones I am telling you the name. Brulosizumab and other one that we are having is pegaptanib. Pegaptanib. So FMG aspirant can remember Bevafarani or Bevokufrani, like how our Shastra sir used to say Bevokufrani. Bevafarani, I am Bevafarani or Bevokufrani, you can remember very well. Bevokufrani brought a pig. Bevokufrani brought a pig. Why will she ever buy a pig? So these are all VEGF inhibitors that can be utilized in age-related macular degeneration. They can also be utilized in your uh, uh, your uh, proliferative diabetic retinopathy. Right? Wet wala age-related macular degeneration may we can utilize. Right? Infliximab is what? Infliximab is one of the TNF alpha inhibitor. Rituximab is anti-CD20, all-time favorite question of the examiner. Please don't forget Rituka story that I have given you already in my Insta story. You can check it out. Belimumab, it's one of the anti-CD22. They inhibit the B-cell activation. They inhibit the B-cell activation. Belimumab inhibit the B-cell activation. We can utilize them in SLE. There are many use of Rituximab. Rituximab, cancer, non-cancer, many uses we can utilize like CLL, rheumatoid, arthritis, idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura, non-Hodgkin lymphoma, autoimmune hemolytic anemia, many uses. 
TNF alpha inhibitor like infliximab, they can be utilized in rheumatoid arthritis, inflammatory bowel diseases, and there can be many other uses as well. Right? Before I end this session, I want to give you TNF alpha inhibitor, which is the all-time favorite question. You can expect one question on TNF alpha inhibitor. Very easy. TNF alpha inhibitor is ice and ag. Ice ke upar ag. Rat mein party karoge na, to do chiz lagta hai. Ice lagta hai for aapke shorts ke liye aur ag lagta hai. Aap sabko bata ki iske liye. So ice and ag TNF alpha inhibitor is going to help you remember na in. Uh, uh, you can remember very easily by ice and arc mnemonic TNF alpha inhibitor. So with this, we are done with our five MCQ in five minutes. Sorry, I uh, extend it because the uh, topic was very important. And all of them high yield topics. All of them were very high yield topics. So we had to cover this one. And we definitely can expect uh, a couple of questions from here. Thank you very much to all of you guys. I'll see you in the next class. Please don't forget to share, like, and subscribe to my new YouTube channel. Thank you very much to all of you.